，刚开始来打这个决明赛的话，我们的目标就是要进入决赛嘛。然后现在也做到了，然后就希望我们跟 L M S 打的时候能发挥更好。我觉得 L P L 需要注意的地方，应该是在他们的打野麻辣香锅这个点上，因为这个版本都蛮适合我跟他的，就是可能会变成我们选一只，是两，是两，我们选两只刺客在互相对拼技术这样。我自己的话，想要在线上的时候不要落后于利亚太多，我觉得我的队友就可以比较轻松一点，因为其实我跟他的线上差距，我觉得应该算蛮明显的，所以我要打线的时候要小心一点。因为这次的决赛应该是我最后一次的打 B O 五了，所以我还是会比较希望是拿到胜利。我觉得我们打 L M C 六的话，我们下轮能把对面打爆。哇 ，Another one there, Prey getting ignited. Dazzle's gonna land, but first blood over to Uzi. 然后 M S 特别强，结果在我们经常看比赛，并且他们机会是很多的。但是我觉得我们能一下韩国队，就代表我们也能战胜 A N S。Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Battle Arena. It is about time for your All Star 2017 Finals, and the two teams that take to the stage have taken down the pre-tournament favorites and the reigning champions. It's about time to crown a new All-Star champion. Before we do, though, let's introduce the cream of the crop of your All-Star 2017 roster. Because, ladies and gentlemen, it was you that voted for them. Starting in the top lane, let me introduce to you Ziv taking on 9-5-7. The players take to the stage. The junglers, Casa, taking on MLXG. From the mid lane, the young superstar Fofo going up against the old superstar Shie. Season two world champion and the only player to get a pen to kill at All Star. It's BB in the AD carry. Going up against 1v1 champion, Uzi! And of course, the call is in captain in the support role. It is Sword Art taking on Mako! And last but definitely not least, The men tasked with wrangling these all-star squads. It's your coaches, Stake taking on Firefox. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together. It is the LPL taking on the LMS in your all-star 2017 finals. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I am Riving Tavisan III, joined by Martin Deficio, Lunga, and Aiden Zyrene Moon as we are here to find out who the All-Star Dream Team is. For the LMF, it's going to be Fofo making himself a name for himself alongside the likes of Sword Art and Karsa. We just saw Uzi putting some pressure on in the 1v1, so he's coming out <laughs> hot. There's a lot of things on both sides. It's going to be a pretty exciting final here. Both teams actually beat Korea during the tournament. Of course, yeah. in the semifinal, it was the LPL team winning 2-1, where the LMS team completely destroyed the GPL lineup. Yeah, we're talking 22 and 24 minutes. Oh, it was minute a massive game. stomp. Back to back. <laughs> oh, yeah, it was like a 46-minute series. It was ridiculous. But yeah, we're talking about the mid laners, Fofo and Shie. These guys have both been playing incredibly well, both matched up against Faker and had good performances. And now seeing them against each other here, I'm actually looking a little bit more at Fofo because he's so new to the Western audience. And as this is going to be one of the last professional games, tournaments of the year, this might be also the last time some of the players are kind of hitting the rifts in names of BB. Yeah, but touching on the mid lane right before we get over to that, yep. we saw these guys go up against Faker and they both had great performances up against each other. Fofo is the one I'm really 
highlighting here because mm -hmm. he had that standout Zoe early on in the tournament. Question was, can he do more than just the Zoe? Right. The answer so far has been yes. Yeah, Shie as well. I think a lot of people would look at him on this lineup here and say, where is, you know, a Zhao Hu, where's a rookie? Devoted in Shie. And uh, he's actually been doing really well, in my opinion. I think he's had a good performance. Don't give him the cast. Yeah, that one especially. <laughs> well, he's also done well against Zoe, and he's one of the only people to do well against Zoe with exactly. both a LeBlanc and a Cassidy in game to boot. So I feel like he's actually got a good idea of how to play against that champion that Bofo was bringing out. Absolutely. And as we were talking about before, as mid laners came up, BB in that moment where he kind of wants to put himself on a pedestal here and play as, as well as he can. Yeah, you were talking about potentially the last match here of the year professionally, and it might be BB's overall because he said he's looking to retire, but his stats are ridiculous right now. If this is one of those tournaments you go through and you go, hmm, maybe, maybe I should come back. Maybe I should. Not That's the dangerous thing as a pro gamer <laughs> when you constantly get sucked back in because you're like, man, I'm still so good. I should just keep doing it. And he's had a great tournament so far, completely destroyed, destroyed the GPL bottling. We had a pentakill as well. Like, I'm actually really looking forward to seeing him versus Uzi and what's going to happen down there. Yeah, especially since BB. You know, we saw his stats are ridiculous right now. He actually retired in 2014 and he came back. back. He's like, ah, oh, you know, maybe I should just you know, come back. Feel a he bit did of that a inkling of championship. Yeah, you ever think about coming back to Fischio? Uh, never. <laughs> Absolutely never. I was very unsuccessful. This man is a former world champion. There is a big difference. <laughs> yeah. And he's largely successful so far in this tournament. But him going up against Uzi, like we were saying, that is a matchup to definitely watch because BB's been popping off. But Uzi, the 1v1 champion, this guy is feeling good so far in this tournament. It'll be interesting to see, but also more interesting to see what these teams prioritize as we're about to get into picks and bans. We have seen that Zoe on the ban list quite a bit, but also, as we we're making note, Fofo and Shie, we'll have to see what those two go for in the mid lane and what is that priority. Bans are already on the list. There's the Ooh. Zoe. Malzahar is going to get hit out as well. Cassidy and Malz have been big on Shia's list. Yeah, I like the research here from uh, the LMS <laughs> team. So, um, hmm, LPL beat Korea two of the games they had Malzahar in it. It was very successful. Let's just ban that away. Amazing pick at the moment. I would even say slightly overpowered and so easy to use against. A lot of players to get caught out. Yeah, that's the thing. It's kind of overpowered in the sense of it's so easy to use. Like the skill floor where you start yeah. is so high up. It can really elevate players. But you know, right now, Fofo and the LMS banning that against GA and the LPL because I don't feel like, you know, they really want to get caught out and collapsed on mid. Also thinking of the junglers, we talk a lot about the mids and the AD carries. MLXG, stealing Barons, take, helping to take down LCK in very good fashion. Karsa as well doing just about the same on his costumes. Yeah, both junglers actually playing uh, really well during the tournament here. Now, Javan is still available. Mm -hmm. We actually saw Javan ban the then Sejuani pick during the semifinals, but this way it's the other way around. And it's something Kasa can take for himself. Yeah, the fact that the Jarvan is left up here and the Sejuani's banned away, the Ezreal is the final ban there for the LPL. Don't want that one going over to BB, who even has his own skin for it from season two. <laughs> we'll see what the LMS goes for here. We're expecting the Jarvan, but things like Zareth are still on the table. Jace, for example, too. Yeah, exactly. We've seen a lot of different choices actually from first pick during this tournament here. Almost MF was banned away by the LMS, which again signals that we are looking towards something like a Jarvan, but in this case here, they take the virus, also take that away from Uzi, who first picked it yesterday in the first game against Korea. They did have that Varus, that Jarvan kind of combination going back and forth, a little AD on the front line, a little on the back line. We'll see how the LPL All-Stars answer back onto this as they get two for themselves. And I'm, I'm kind of mixed a little bit when it comes to, you know, first picking Varus in my opinion on it, because I think they're still Jin who is a fine answer against it or a fine choice when you already see Varus and you kind of just trade Lethality, AD carries versus each other. And then you can still get two other super strong picks if yeah. you're the LPL. Yeah. My thought on it though is if you're the LMS, taking the Varus away from Uzi and making Uzi play the other Lethality user, I don't even know if he's going to go for the Jin because that's not a very high mechanics, high execution <laughs> champion. In terms hey, that's some skill shots. Like, I can miss them. Boom. He's not even going to take oh. it, right? Interesting he's choice. He's from the 1v1. He'll stay in the back line and just throw out the stunts. Yeah, but Ash, this is actually the second Ash we've seen of the tournament overall. Yep. Uh, you usually take Comet on it to just poke with W, but yep. this allows him to set up and have an ultimate that helps engage for the team. And once again, we're looking at poke with the Jace top two. So very popular pick during the Casper Cup when we saw so many Comet AD carries down that bot lane, Ash, Varus, MF, Jin, everything. But that Javan, Javan we mentioned before here, I would have loved to seen it locked in by LPO and then take AD carry in the Ooh. next rotation. I think uh, the LMS are getting some very strong picks at the moment. Yeah, but I feel like right now, 
They've kind of set themselves up for the LPL to take something like, you can even take the Seraph that's still up into the Azir and it does incredibly well against him. Rise is still on the table. LeBlanc, if Xie wants to go back to that, but the Xerath is the biggest counter. Also still a potential flex pick if you want to move it down to bottom lane, but obviously looking at the LPL lineup here, there are three champions at the moment that will struggle late game against things like Javan, who can just ulti right onto them. Follow up then from a, a Varus ulti on Azir sliding in. It's going to be hard to navigate late game yep. fights. So I think LPL are going to put on a lot of pressure early to mid game. That or it gets a little bit of HP on that team composition as we get into the second round. Scion getting taken away from Ziv. I love the champion pool that he brings to the table and what teams kind of have to react to as well with that. Yeah, and I feel like this is kind of that tournament meta developing where mm. Jace had Scion played into him twice. Both times the Scion dumpstered the Jace. <laughs> and now people are like, okay, I guess it's just a counter where he'll constantly poke you with Comet and E yep. and you don't have as much pressure as he tanks up. Your point uh, before there, Riv, about getting more HP on the LPL lineup is actually fairly interesting because if it is going to be Jay's top, which is what we expect at the moment, you're kind of just looking at it, a tank support and maybe a tank jungler. Yep. But Sejuani is already banned away, which is kind of the preferred tank jungler. Then maybe are we looking at a Gragas here from MLXG True. just to have a bit of a front line? And of course, for the tank one, there is Alistar, there is Braum, Tom Kench, there's a difference choices you can go for, but they definitely need to get some sort of front line against this very strong LMS comp. I wonder if MLXG will go for the Lee Sin and try to outplay. Ooh, you go to last the time, Ooh, just like it all it's, early game. It's very hard to <laughs> execute against Nazir. That's why I'm hesitant to kind of throw it out there. But they've already banned away something like a Kha'Zix from MLXG. And I wonder, okay, yeah, like you said, the mm -hmm. top catch, another tank trying to make them dig deeper for these tank champions to add HP to the lineup. Yeah, exactly. Again, the Gragas is still there and something MLXG could Whoa! Oh, and finally, we were looking at the junglers before <laughs> this started with high win rate in solo queue and Bramus was sitting right there laughing in our face at the top. Wow. Oh, man, that, that's actually just kind of insane that he picks this up here. This is the first Ramus of the entire tournament here, <laughs> picked in the finals, gonna roll out. I am really excited for this. And this is what we want to see doing All-Stars. We want to see picks like Ramus come in here. Yeah, okay, he might not be great against Azir because, well, he can just <laughs> kind of get walled back and he's a little bit out of the fight, but still, flash in, engage if you can, be super aggressive in the early game with constant ganks. You can get so much movement speed on Ramus with the different runes. Like, there are a lot of choices here for MLXG. And he is the kind of player who loves to just chain gank in the early game. Yeah, I'm just sad he's revealing, you know, my free low here. Like, this is the champion uh, that... Everyone can see it now. I know, everybody <laughs> sees it. But the thing is, is as Ramus goes up in win rate, he usually doesn't go too high in pick rate. But recently, he's actually had a surge, and MLXG has been on top of that. And more HP and more tankiness to the lineup yeah, here. It's exactly what they put into those last few picks. And LMS All-Stars answer as well with a bit of beef of their own. A little bit more engaged as well, because again, Leona also works so well against things like Zareth and Ash. They, they can't really get out of her ulti if they don't have Flash available. So late game fights again for the LPL will be hard to move around against such a strong team fight and engage comp from the LMS. But when you're looking at Ramus, you can just be so proactive. And that's something that can snowball the game out of control. If you pull up one or two early ganks as a Ramus, your Jace gets ahead, or maybe it's your bottom lane where you can start forcing plays with, with a level six Ash. Suddenly, you just take over the game. Love it. You see MLXG, a <laughs> little more offensive this tournament, defensive before the tournament. Now, offense, defense in the pick of Ramis. He's going to have to watch out for Carcer, though. If he ends up having to follow Carcer around, we've seen what both of these junglers can do once they get a lead. They start to control the game themselves. And then it's just everybody else picking up the kills as assists. We are about to head on to the Rift. The LMS versus the LPLs, we're about to find out here on the last day of All-Stars who the true dream team is in this best of five. And I am so excited. I want to see what the Ramus <laughs> route is. I want to see what I'm MLXG feeling you're excited. does. Because he's affecting a lot of the early game. They have that Jace top. Where is he going to go? And is it going to be some new route? Because I definitely want to see what, he, what happens here. I expect them to take control of the top side of the map and split it to try and put Karsa on the bottom side. Because Karsa has been a force to be reckoned with. I'm just gonna say, if he does not gank level two, level three, level four, level five, then I'm gonna be disappointed in MLXG. So should this be kind of early by Moby Boots, right back out there, continuously going? Ooh. Is that what we're kind of looking for? That's if you're know. real crazy. Yeah, that's <laughs> if you're crazy. I like free boots, so. Oh, all right, yeah, that's true. We are about to be onto the rift. We'll see who actually can get an upper hand in this game. Remember, 
Little advantage, I'd say, to the LPL. Uzi saw warmed up from his 1v1 situation with Jerks <laughs> in there. So maybe the focus is to bot lane to keep him hot. Well, I would also say advantage for LPL because the crowd has been heavily favored oh, for the true. LPL. Very like, true. You do not usually expect to be thousands of miles away from home, <laughs> and it is basically a home field advantage. Everybody has come out here to really cheer for them, and it's been an incredible weekend. You're definitely feeling it. A little, a little bit of Worlds after Worlds kind of back here in NA. We'll see what everybody has for each other to start off. A standard in the brush to find out where MLXG is as the line of scrimmage disbands down the river. Uzi really the only one getting himself into a scary spot. It's just to get vision, though. And the keystone choice here for MLXG is Aftershock, so uh, not a huge surprise coming in there. Obviously very good when you're able to land CC and get a bit of extra damage and tankiness coming from it. I uh, will update on the rest of the runes once we get the whole list. Skill order, runes, let's uh, give the people the Ramus build that they need. <laughs> Is it the one that they need, though? We'll see. It's the one they deserve. <laughs> there you go. There you go. The perfect timing, clicking down for CA, so he'll be able to have that early Zanyas as that comes up for himself. So plays to be made there if Karsa and Fofo try to put aggression early in the mid lane. And we got the full runes now. When we actually see MLXG and 957 move in to steal away a blue buff. So we got the Resolve Tree, obviously, with Aftershock. He then went unflinching to get more tenacity for himself. Then he also went straight towards Iron Skin for more armor in the early game, and then Overgrowth, which we see in a lot of tank junglers, where you don't really, in the early game, need more help. So you take Overgrowth and instead, you just scale a little bit better. Yeah, it's interesting because the more resistances you have, the better HP is, and vice versa. So Ramus in defense ball curl, you want a lot of HP, and especially if he's going to go for something like Cinder Hulk into a Thorn Mail. Level two ganks. Hey. This is what we wanted. Deficio right. fan. Let's see. He doesn't have Power Ball, though. He's going to walk right out for Ziv, try to get him. Where's the taunt? Ah, right there. So taunting. Ziv's going to go ahead, probably flash this one out. Pulls back Spirit's Refuge for a little defense, and he gets himself to safety. But right now, Karsa actually split the map in the weirdest way. He did the southern jungle red buff. Oh. Now he's on the top red buff. This is so unexpected. I don't know if they saw him actually come in here, but MLXG. Blast Cone just nice comes idea. up. He goes over, going to get the extra damage down and blast oh. out if he needs to. The electrocute hit and lets MLXG know he is out of a red. Out for now, he also spotted the Javan on top side, obviously, and now they're actually pinging around where the Javan foot could be. MLXG is starting his little camp on top side. Yeah, but the Jarvan really wants to upset this one lane we talked about it in Champion Select. Trying to make it so that this early game Jace is punished. Still has the red buff. Oh! Nice flash out. 957 dodges the standard. Oh. Flag drag as well. Will he be able to walk out past the movement speed from the ultimate as he changes forms and he gets himself out alive? I love it, man. Both top lane is staying alive in the start here. 957 is a quick move. Butt lane. Gonna be the hit. Zenith played onto Uzi. They're able to turn around a very nice shield and unbreakable by Mako as they trade back in positive form against the LMS. That top lane gank, that was so well played from pretty much everybody involved. Ziv, Taunt, Flash, 957 sees it coming and flashes diagonally towards the gank, and then Karsa, Flag Drag, and flashes for the knockup finally. That was some really just next level. That's the next mind game. Seeing the mind game come after, it was so good. So the level two Javan is sitting top lane again. They don't let the Jace play. That flash is down, the teleport is there. Gets himself a quick acceleration gate. Taunt is in! Should be enough damage to take down 957. First Blood's gonna be going over to save with the last hit. Don't let him play League of Legends. You know it's gonna be the pushing lane. It's easy to gank. They split the map, but it was Karsa's route that got him to the top side and able to stick there. And this is how you tilt the top laner. You gank him, you're only level two, you don't go back to base to start farming again, you just sit top lane and wait for him to return to lane, and then you actually kill him and get the first blood. MLXG is looking for a gank level three, as we requested. Just on the outside of the vision, I don't think he's been seen just yet. They have not pinged it either. And if he waits any longer, Karst is going to be soon in range after his Raptors. Uzi holding back. They're also trying to not play aggressive and put a tell there that MLXG is in the river. I mean, there's two flashes available on the side of LMS here. It's a bit of an odd gank MLXG are trying to set up. Ideally, you want to have Uzi's level six first, and you can just arrow straight onto the Varus and actually try and take him down. MLXG ends up backing away from this one. Kasa, happy after securing first blood. Yeah, it's interesting because they haven't done many camps at all. MLXG is just barely level three, and Karsa is in the same boat. He did two camps in the first four minutes, and he just picked up his third, and there he got a scuttle. And friendly scuttle farming here on the bot side of the river. Blazcone taken oh. out during the taunt, maybe? Yeah, right after the taunt. Blacked out. It's a new thing. <laughs> <laughs> 
Fofo getting himself to safety. Shie actually pressuring. Almost getting caught up by the minions, and Karsten tries to take advantage of that one. In and out as he is just trying to apply pressure everywhere. Bot lane damages because the blows goes through on that Winter's Bite and Sword Art. First to face Daybreak and oh. Ingo to lock him down. He gets to stand beside me to save me. It's like MLXG doesn't want this to end. He's saying there's a lot of action for Karsa. I need to make something happen on my side. Flash is there. Is he going to get oh. there? Oh, the minions taunted onto Sword Art. Oh. Last few hits actually go to BB. Sword Art's still in range. Uzi oh, not going to take the, the shot. A few more hits, and the resistance <laughs> is given over from Mako as the W comes back up. I love all the action around the bottom lane right there. Ooh. That's so close. Both sides are actually going down. Karsa's on his way. Yeah, they're still shoving. Karsa, he might be able to pick somebody up here. That with looks a like a back. man is so oh, low. on a mission. Does he give himself up just for one kill? That's two assists and a kill. If he goes down, she a very low summon a heal for himself as well as that comet would have been coming over. And everybody in the bot lane makes it out safe with their kill. Ooh, and Karsa didn't actually try and go in there. Zero obviously called that he returned to mid lane to try and see get a kill again. on Zero. Yeah, let's see the replay. So this is the long, long fight we've had back and forth. MLXG ends up coming down with the Ramesh, using that mobility and then flashing in to secure the kill. And Uzi realizing he's tanking the turret and the minions at the same time. They took turret shots on multiple people and just divided it up almost perfectly there that Uzi was able to survive at the end. See where the pressure goes now. Kind of been from Karsa and MLXG. Bot lane still deciding to fight back and forth on their own terms. It seems to be going in favor of the LPL at this point. 56 to 39 in that mid lane as Fofo is starting to take a little bit of control without too much pressure. Just one visit from Karsa. And if we just continue on MLXG and his runes here, we talked about resolving the main tree. Stepped into precision in his second tree. Went for alacrity, meaning again he's gonna get more attack speed when he gets some of these big minion kills. And then also went for triumph in case he actually is in a big fight and he gets kill on assist, get some HP back for himself. It's a little old dangerous game. Yeah, it's actually interesting. A lot of bruisers like to take it, obviously, when yeah. you're just diving into big fights, but on tanks you normally don't need it. Yeah, it's strange, but. In terms of what you could take on Ramus, he didn't go for the extra movement speed from things like Slarity or even Water Walking, but opted into the more attack speed, and then Triumph, which is a high win rate rune on him. He basically wanted more, well, faster clear in the jungle instead of faster ganks, essentially, uh, from himself. But then you can also turn around and say, if you can kill the camp faster, you can actually return to the map faster and start ganking. So he didn't value the movement speed, he valued the attack speed. And for him so far, I mean, He's got one assist, bot lane Uzi flash. Oh, that was really well done from Uzi, just getting out of there just in time. And what is kind of the objective of MLXG now? We know maybe what LPL one does throughout the game, but as MLXG is trailing Karsa now, how does he get himself back in? Or is it just kind of ram us into the lane? Right it? now it's control Karsa. Karsa has okay. flash, and he's going to try to make a play in the next few minutes here, but you really want to kind of contain that. The top lane, you know, that whole fiasco is over. Jace <laughs> is at a point where he's okay. He needs to get back in. The bottom side of the map, though, I think is really where both junglers will start focusing here because this is where the party will start happening. That bottom lane, the Drake, there's so much on the bottom side to really go for. And so many flashes on cooldown as well down the bottom lane. You know, LMS no flash on their side. We should just use his before here. Leona level six is already there. So it's the same on the side of Ash, meaning there are big ulties to start the fights. You just need some help. Now the situation sounds perfect for a chain of corruption or a crystal enchanted arrow. Little smash and bash from 957 onto Ziv in the top lane, and he gains HP control on that. Their teleports are down and recently. And Ziv is also a little bit greedy, I feel like, with the with the Tiamat here in the early game. Like, just getting into Tappy as fast yeah. as possible. You're gonna take so much damage. That's an error. Felt the wind on that. LMS knows it's down, they feel, as they can get some deeper wards in without taking that to the face. And Uzi's gonna go ahead and clear out the bot side with of Mako, so that'll slow things down for the LMS side, but I'm sorry, the LPL side, but LMS now looking to see what they can do with the arrow down. They want to fight here, Rip. It looks like LPL Mako still wants oh. to go in. Lots of Glacial flashes. Fisher could still be there. It might just be get out of this one. A one oh. one Bebe in the bot lane and Uzi. The Solar Flare comes right in from Sword Art. They take that fight. The top side loses CA and MLXG, and the LMS close in immediately, knowing the ultimate's down on Uzi.
Karsa on the other side of this here. They may try to dive for Mako. Very slow. It's going to be Sword Art throwing down the W for a little bit more tankiness as Karsa goes in for the kill. A clean four for zero for the LMS. That was probably the cleanest flag and drag into a Shen taunt that I have seen because that was so fast from Ziv. As soon as Ziv came through, usually the Shen just stands there for like a half second realizing it finally completed, but it was just across two people immediately. They're taking half out fights though. I mean, yeah, they are. And this is also something we talked about in champs. So like there's Whoa. a lot of champions on the side of LPL that can't really get out of yeah. an ulti from a job. And especially if you don't have flash. And in this case here, yeah, a lot of the flashes were down even before the fight started. So great engage from LMS, great call. After Casa was actually backing Ooh. away at first. They're like, no, 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 turn around, get in there. Zip's like, get in there. Yeah, come on, let's kill these guys. And then suddenly they pick up a bunch of kills. I don't know what 957 is trying to do here with MLXG. MLXG looks like he's trying to get into the bush on the top side. Maybe. He loves hugging the wall right now. Did it on the bot side? Yeah. Not this. Maybe he's allergic to the grass. Who knows? Yeah, we'll have to ask. It's strange. I was like, I don't feel like Zip is ever going to push that lane up. Uh, he'll probably stay <laughs> at that one third point of his Not own too lane. Fast at least, right? Yeah. So that obviously means though, if you are the LPL, if you can actually start, try and force something on bottom side, and nine five seven is alone top lane, he will take mm. the tower. Yes. Like he's gonna take that one, get a big objective for your team, and try and make sure Uzi doesn't die again on the bottom side. He still doesn't have flash. Leona ulti is ready. It's almost a free kill on the bottom side if Casa is there. Yeah, there are a few things you can do here as the LPL. I, I would even say there's potential to lane swap after this back and have the Ash try to get the turret, but I feel like leaving 957 here. They're trying to counter, trying to get something. Oh, ah, smart air. Great positioning. Could get the Cataclysm in, but they decide not to. Just outside turret range, it may not have been the finalized the kill. And 957 holds his flash. At the start of the tournament, when it was Karsa and Ziv, I remember just being like, I really want to watch Karsa again alongside Ziv. It was the last All-Stars that it happened, and it was fantastic then. And I love seeing Karsa playing with a top laner that is aggressive and has the potential to carry a game. Historically, he's played with people like MMD, and he's also played alongside uh, Stake. Care not guys who are known for carrying. They're mostly tank players. But Ziv, we saw the synergy earlier with the engage, and we're seeing it kind of line up here in the aggression. Ash Arrow, Flash Arrow coming out of Bebe. He keeps himself safe. Five to one here. Just about 13 minutes into the game. LPL is trying to give himself a way back in. And I'm sure we'll see that arrow as it comes up every time from Uzi. Well, at the moment, we haven't really seen LPL get the advantage they kind of need, I feel like, to really make use of their yeah. composition because sieging with Zareth, if you're already behind against a lot of hard engage, is extremely difficult to do. Ramus as well, like, sure, he gets extremely tanky, but in late game fights, it's it's taunt one guy. That's kind of your purpose. So you want to utilize his early strength in terms of ganking, and right now it's Casa kind of controlling the game. Yeah, and just to add on top of that, this looks even worse for the LPL because Fofo will probably be untouched during the mid late game portions of these team fights because they have so many people going forward, and the LPL will try to collapse, and they don't have as much backline access. And Fofo is already ahead 40 CS. He has done fantastically. Yeah. We talked about him and how this is the like the first tournament where he's been exposed to a Western audience. And we're seeing how like J-Team was at the top of the standings for the LMS during the regular season most of the time. That's an insane CS advantage already. He's at that 10 per minute mark, plus some. Gives them a lot of control over any of these fights if they decide to group and really poke is what the LPL wants. So if LMS can get LPL to group up, Bofo will have a great time. Teleport back to the top side. Ziv gets himself prepared for some action. Yeah, and when the poke does come online for the LPL, it will take a bit, and it's mostly CA, yeah. but at the same time, he's behind. And we were talking about this at the start. This is supposed to be a Zareth counter matchup where he counters the Azir. Look at this down bottom. Glacial Fisher, Ash Arrow, Alt's going back and forth. The Sword Art's not taking too much on the back line. Baby's not been able to deliver to Mako, though, so they're at a health disadvantage here. Concussive blows onto Sword Art as they keep delivering. As Ranger's focus wears off, Uzi feels like that is enough damage. Follow up, Folly Comet to end the fight. Xie was also moving down to potentially land his ulti and actually try and secure Akilia, but Sword Art is not going to be happy with that engage. You, you need to land that ulti straight in the face of Uzi at least force his flash. In fact, he ended up, ended up going in after already missing the stun, so that meant there was a lot of damage in return, and the LMS bottom lane actually lost that trade. 
And there's Rambus. Many attempts to get to the top side. 957 takes a pretty bad fight, but he can still get in for the damage. A good taunt from MLXG. Does 957 want to change forms to get in under the turret? It's going to be MLXG tanking first. A good flash from oh. Dan, but he's going to be able to clean him up with the E. That one is very important here for the LPL. They need to get this tower down here. Need to start getting some gold on the board. Bottom lane here, they gotta just make sure they don't get ganked by Casa. They're playing safe, they're backing away, and suddenly they get a turret. Yeah, exactly the point that MLXG should be targeting. Because 957, that Jace, you're supposed to have pressure with it from the pick ban. It's been shut down. It's a 3 and 0 Ziv on that Shen earlier. And that's really what you want to do is get that turret because it looked like he was now pushing the Jace in and winning trades against the Jace. And this will reverse that matchup and give them a lot of gold that they desperately need on the LPL side. Symbol gang from MLXG onto Zip. You know, early flash to try and get onto that turret as fast as possible. And he takes a lot of damage during the taunt. And 957 knowing he can finish the kill. I don't think Zip was expecting that much damage from the Ramus during the taunt because he had just gone and taunted 957, and he didn't take almost anything right. from him. Coming up big on that one, getting Ziv nice and fat, and then getting the Thanksgiving kill for him over to 957. A little bit of extra gold there, and now we'll see what the kind of pressure on the top side is. Ziv starting to bring that down into the jungle with a bit of vision, so make sure he can stay safe on any ganks that start to come his way from Karsa, who's actually been a little quieted down, if you will, after the beginning part of the game. So BB still doesn't have a flash, but there is a Shen ulti ready, making this a little bit scary for the LPL if they want to actually tower dive. MLXG is sitting here, waiting, also ready to counter gank if Kansa shows up, but realizing, okay, it's pretty difficult to actually go under the turret, also with Leona. Kansa's on the way, though, and there is currently no backup. Mid laners. Still somewhat in vision. I think not having CA there may call off anything from the side of LMS. Carson goes to clear the wards. A good push up by Uzi and Mako to set that up very calmly and wait for MLXG to come in for the counter game. 17 minutes in, as you said, Cyrene, still a lot of focus bottom with a few love taps top whenever they're kind of jungling towards that section. Yeah, it's really the junglers are kind of influencing the whole map. Mm -hmm. uh, both of them have 100% kill participation on both sides. And we're seeing when they show up what the instincts of MLXG and Karsa kind of are. And I feel like Karsa, we're seeing like that solo queue where this is the lane that I need to reverse. This is the lane that you know, was having some issues. And MLXG, it seemed like he was trying to play a little bit more like a professional setting. Like, oh, this is where I'm supposed to go early on. This is the matchup I need to actually influence. And then when he started going for those repeat ganks over and over, like covering top lane, that one I thought was incredibly interesting with the Ramus just kind of sitting there. So, solo queue seems to be the way to go. <laughs> I just like the Casas, like, I'm just gonna control mid lane and let Fofo kind of get further ahead. 200 CS at 17 or just about 18 minutes into the game is absolutely insane farming from this Azir. And no one is touching him. He even has cleanse for late game if he gets taunted. That's not gonna do anything. Yeah, Ash arrow, like, you're hoping for something like that, but it's not even gonna land. Sword art. Pretty damn tanky chain of corruption. Yes, goes back to MLXG, however, just on the side as he starts to teeter back and forth, seeing Ooh. Karsa. Karsa enters the fray, and now they taunt in at Mako. MLXG wants to taunt back, but says it's not worth his life. And they leave Mako to go down. And I get it, you know, you want to get some kills in this lane here, but when you land the arrow onto the support, then that's not really, really the guy you want to kill. Luckily, it means 957 is alone. Yep, he gets to get this turret to half HP. He'll take this down, that hypercharge already ranked five. He'll be able to pick this one up and keep his teleport too, so he may be able to be uh, influential in this upcoming part of the game. MLXG now able to pretty much be all over the map, causing a little bit of mayhem, but still losing Mako on the bot side, gaining the turret from 957 in the top. LPL keeping himself in a pretty good spot, just about 1,000 gold down. That could have been next level uh, mind games, though, from the LPL bot lane. Oh, yeah? You know, force a fight in the support. Uzi flashes away. If Mako was just ready to flash as well, they could both maybe have stayed alive. <laughs> while 957 took that tower. Look at this here. They're baiting the fight. MLXG is kind of like, yeah, I don't really want to go in. The MLXG just, uh, nope, I'm out But here. look, if, ML if Mako here can actually flash away from this one, he probably can't because there's a Leona ulti landing after, but they will get a tower at least. Sadly, they also lose a bot tower, so in the end, not a... Not a great trick. Yeah, I did think the sequencing was quite good from the LMS because Karsa still had ultimate, still had flash, so he could chase a flash mm -hmm. and potentially follow up afterwards. But they decided, you know, let's wait for it, and nobody had to really blow flash there. And it was just a death for Mako. Wouldn't be surprised if there's a rinse and repeat as well. We saw Uzi try to dodge out of the Zenith plate there with his flash down. Cataclysm is up, and so is Karsa's flash. So they may 
get a very quick kill back down in the bot lane on Uzi if they choose, so choose. Yeah, they can try and kill Uzi. They already killed the tower, meaning they can actually start roaming. And that's kind of the thing I'm missing from this Leona here is get out on the map, man. Come on, I want to see you mid lane. I want to see you in the enemy jungle. You're so good at forcing these early skirmishes. And now Sword Art is unleashed. Yeah, he did buy Moby Boots' very first item. And then he was just up in the river. And that's about it. He hasn't gone other places now that the lane's down. Ooh. You can see Fofo after buying the two penetration items in a good spot. Good poke. Dance and shoot. Raj comes out. He will be able to dance it quite well. Sword Art face to face with MLXG as they get themselves to safety. A lot of love taps here from these teams and Comets flying back and forth, but no full committal to the fight. Fofo very low on Mana here, and they might have to change the thought about the fight. Well, a few seconds on that Shen ulti here. Oh. Phoenix runs down to MLXG. That's going to Shen. be Sword Art in, taking a lot of damage. And here comes Mako and the rest of the team. As Mako goes down, Sword Art is in. 957 will then fall as the soldiers are pushed forward. Fofo and the rest of the team looking for a bit more. Yeah, the Shen ultimate from Ziv, keeping a minute, able to turn it around there at the end. This Shen is huge. And we saw what Fofo was able to do with all that damage. It's so hard to get to him and even make him blow the cleanse. I like to play the Fofo. Take a bit of damage at first, kind of bait around him. Bait him. Lane. Come on, guys, you can kill me in here. Just all five, try. And then the moment the LPL group up, instantly LMS turned around. We see the engage here. It's after some of the poke has already landed, but suddenly, MLXG too close to the turret. Casa coming behind as well. There's so many ways to get onto the LPL team and just win the fight for LMS. Yeah, the LPL would have to stay. This is basically an artillery team composition. You should almost never be fully engaging and putting yourself at risk, but it's so hard to not do that to push the game forward. It requires a lot of macro and kind of dividing them across the map with something like the Jace, but I don't, feel, I don't see that happening with these compositions. That have, it's these teams that have only been together for like two weeks. Also, artillery kind of suck if the enemy can just shoot a grenade in and destroy <laughs> your cannon instantly, which is what's happening in these fights here. You can't really protect them. Even if you have people in front, they're just firing it over your head. They even have their own artillery as well. Just the fact that Fofo is at that 250 CS mark. Now he's got some kills in the Leandris. This is a very scary Ooh. Azir and a scary Shen, both the solo laners. Time to outplay, well. this is all stars. So it's down the Yellow, he tries to be good, gets himself behind the turret to play a little back and forth. But they pin him up against the bars, take him down. And 957 coming back up. 37 seconds and they have top turret to themselves as LPL tries to defend. It's hard to outplay that, Deficio. Very hard. I was talking about Sword Art. Ah. Uh, manning the CC. Uh, walking up and queuing. God. Hey, I'm a, this I'm is All-Stars. Form of support, man. You take what you can get. That was an outplay. He landed a stun. I like it. I like it. Learning with the fish. Yeah. See, he's fed as well. 303. Best KDA. Almost best KDA. Yeah. I mean, he's looking at his AD carry. Like, yeah, you got to get some of those kills. I mean, you could be like Karsa and have 100% kill participation and no deaths. Still pretty good. He's been doing a lot of it's that. So try hard, tournament. Yeah. Gold star, man. Some people want the gold star, and he'll get two. Well, something that's not try hard here. He's going for the black cleaver. We saw that a lot before. Well, that's like the solo queue, Jarvan. Not the, quite the dusk blade, but there isn't a whole lot of armor to go through. It's kind of just you know, yeah. MLXG will get there, but it's mostly for the CDR. More ultis. No knights vow. None of that, you know, Randwin's omen stuff. I want to see more damage after this. It's been really fun though to watch like the LMS dream team. There's. Yep. So many good players on this roster we normally never see play together because they're split up on multiple teams in the LMS. And now they're finally united together and the coordination is actually pretty spot on when they're yeah. roaming around. And this is legitimately pretty much the best player in each position for the LMS. You know, you could argue like maybe Maple, but he didn't have a great year for himself alongside Karsa. But Fofo, he was the one that, you know, we didn't see him internationally. And he's kind of the, the one that really hinged on how good was he going to be when he gets to All-Stars. And so far, it's been great. It's the pressure as well when you, it's not just a kind of a regular season game. You're up against other All-Stars, so it's going to be even harder. And you have that pressure of the community watching you. So very good of him to show on the international stage. You can do it on land. You can do it on land. 25 minutes coming up into this game now. Nine to two. Just about a thousand gold lead there in favor of LMS, creeping up on two as they get control of the bear pit. All right, so far, we would uh, kind of say LMS has been playing fairly spot on when it comes to forcing team fights. Uh, normally, we would talk about all the sexy vision control around Baron now and how you gotta slow push the waves and then get some more vision, but now we just wanna see some more engages because 
That's what we're here for, and especially when Sordat is on this Leona. MLXG possibly looking for a target. Smite all over to Karsa. And they're gonna make their way out saying, thank you very much, a little red power play. Bot laners have teleports up as well as Stand United on the side of Zip. Wow. Uh, so that Arcano Pulse actually did hit the Leona. That's why the Comet went off. And he pretty much took no damage. It's like, boom. Oh, it's not looking pretty good right now for the uh, LPL. They're going to have to try to leverage that Jace on the bottom side. It's only a 3,000 gold lead for the LMS, so this Baron could be something that gets turned around. They do have vision with Hawkshot. Be a big fight around this one here, Mako. We'll be in first. LMS is backing away. Sometimes you're just kind of testing. You're like, if we start this now, are you ready? Can you actually move in and stop us? And the answer in this case was yes, and therefore they just step away, go back towards the mid lane, and hope that GA is getting greedy for some of these minions in mid lane. Flash coming up for these top laners very quickly as well. They also have to be careful where they're teleporting or alting from. Both can dislodge each other from those abilities. Ooh, the so tower they dive? may not make it to the fight. Yeah, right they want a tower dive. You got a tower dive. Him. Oh, Ooh, by the way. Jarvik Quattro going in on to CA. Daylight comes down. And with the sun in his eyes, he has no idea what's going on. They're gonna be able to drop a little bit of pressure onto that mid turret, but may even drop back to see what else they can get around that Baron. And that's that main wave clear down, They're able to just dive underneath the turret and get him when he has no protection. It's so hard for the LPL guys, like Deficio was saying, after champion select, to actually stay alive when they start diving and just going after the back line. It's also a little bit unfair, you know, for GA sitting there in the mid lane, and then the Flash Wolves duo just moves towards him. He's, he's sort of. Should have been an inhibitor, should have been in the fountain. But no, on a serious note, they're just diving constantly, and that's how they'll push the game forward here with the Leona, who can tank turrets, and with the Jarvan. And who needs to set up a Baron properly if you can just force a play and get a kill or two first, yeah. and then do Baron. That's the proper way to control the objective. I mean, they go into it right now, and they just start taking pepper shots from CA and 957 until they lose all of their health. It's not a huge amount of AoE, but we saw how quick Carso went down in his not as tanky build going for the Black Cleaver as they started Baron. He also has perfect timing now, so he can Cataclysm in his onions. Yeah, has the <laughs> stopwatch. Uh, either that's for a flashy play, stop, or he's thank going you. for the Guardian Angel next. I would say GA, or at least he's gonna get it later, and yeah. you might as well have sit on the stopwatch in case you need it. It's, not, it's a style stopwatch if he goes in and dives, <laughs> and just presses it afterwards. I would like to see that. I've seen like a whole bunch of Lee Sins be like, I'm gonna buy this. Kick back, not die in the next fight. I've also seen some try and make that play where they try and yep. kick it back and then <laughs> hit the stopwatch first, and you're like, wait a minute, I didn't even kick the guy. <laughs> and then there's people who buy it and forget about it because they never buy Azonias on something like, you know, AD carry or jungle. I mean, no joke, one of the hardest things for a lot of players in League of Legends is actually Woo. using active items. Oh, yeah. But, whoa! whoa. Get a fight. Here comes MLXG, doesn't get in. Sword Art taking a bunch of damage, but is he? It looks like he's healing under the pressure. LMS is absolutely crushing the LPL health bars right now as they make their way into the fight. 957 on the back line trying to deliver us. He has to stay in long range mode. They cannot approach this tanky team, and LMS comes away with one. So much damage, so much CC from the LMS, and they don't even care about anything at the moment. They just keep forcing fights. They got two Cloud Drakes, so I guess you can engage a little bit faster. That's going to help, at least for the Leona and the Third Javan. The Are you finally converted to the Church of Cloud Drake? Hey, we're, we're in North America right now. I love Cloud Drake. <laughs> Best Drake in the game. I haven't had to get another one. About it, yeah. Let's see how this happens. So MLXG coming from the back, Righteous Glory, and begin. Yeah, expecting to actually catch somebody off the backside of the arrow, but then the engage from the Leona from Sword Art and MLXG and Uzi up to the left side. Karsa goes in, and then it's Fofo with the follow-up damage from the soldiers. There's just so much damage from this this year. Ugh. His CS like per minute is even like slowed down a bit, but he's still an absurd amount ahead. I love that uh, Ziv's input in this fight was take an arrow in the face. I mean, like, yeah, guys, you can go now. The arrow, <laughs> arrow's on cooldown. Just fight. <laughs> it's called soaking, you know? The ability's down. I do that all the time as a tank. Run in, they killed you. That's why you're like, oh, yeah, uh, Ash ulti down. No, this guy used it too. Boom. <laughs> My favorite is when that happens, but it's the guy that's dying over and over again. He's still helping. Hey, Zed Alt and Ash Alt down. Hey, <laughs> yeah. Thanks, guys. Worth Zero it. and eight. They're on cooldown now. <laughs> he's just soaking abilities. You know, he's soaking cooldowns. It's part of the strategy. All right, they're baiting around Baron again. It's GA, no flash. Uzi, no flash. Easy targets for Sword Art or Kasa. Now you either start the Baron and you're ready to just disengage when the enemy shows up and you kill them, or you just hide in the jungle first and then you force the fight before you start the Baron. Ooh. 
They're hiding in the jungle. Oh, sword art. Possibly the rumble. Look how Here's fast the he ward. is. Moby boots, double cloud drake. You can't get away from him. Fight for the red again. It's actually not even the Baron. It's then this red that has been starting our fights. The single kills we're getting is everybody's a little too tentative to actually get in to the nitty gritty of these fights. 30 minutes on the clock, taking stock of everything. Fofo is gigantic right now. And this is what LPL is trying to get away from. Karsa just sets up the Cataclysm and he throws the soldiers right inside with everybody else behind it. Yeah, we almost have 100 CS up here yeah. for Fofo. In the mid horizon. Well, Uzi right Go now is art. trying to hide around a corner, but there's a ward being placed by LMS mm -hmm. that he's actually standing on every single time he's trying to do it. It's not spotted by that control ward in the brush either. A so angle LPL right there. feel like they're safe here. Yeah, they don't actually see it. So Uzi's getting uh, baited just a little bit, but obviously he didn't fire any arrow and didn't get engaged on just yet. So at what point do you do like a half semi split push where you hope to not lose his ear? I mean, they've kind of been doing, oh, with the, uh, if you're the LMS. Yes. Oh, right now I feel like you could put the Azir in the top lane and like shove every now and then because you have Zid with ulti. Catch him on kind of a but you don't have control of this area. Right, yet. right. Now that they have control, they'll do the Baron. LPL will be slow to walk in. It might be half. And there they go. Hmm. And they walk away. In Intense. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say interesting that LPL Fight. were allowed to walk in. <laughs> oh, them. there it is. Intensity in 10 cities. It's going to be Mako going down first. Exhaust is still up, so he's got it for next fight. It could be crazy. Yeah, that's what we want to see when a team walks into the jungle to try and stop a Baron. Not, you know, just allow them to walk in and place a ward. Just, just kill them. 957 also losing down the bottom lane. It's uh, been a rough game for him on this Jace. Yeah, hasn't been able to do much of anything. Uh, I feel like we're in North America. It's an NA Jace coming out here. It's just the, the region itself. I was actually going to say that, but I'm like, no. I'm casting with <laughs> two NA guys in North America. I don't want you guys to beat me up, so I'm just not going to say it. But now you said it, and you're the NA cast. <laughs> Cloud Drake up in one and a half. Third one there. RNG being pretty special this game, and we will get no more Cloud Drakes after this one. We'll have to see what. What a shame. Can. Yeah, I know, right? We could have just wanted more, but it's not going to happen today. Almost a 9,000 gold lead in a very quick amount of time here as LMS catapults themselves into the lead and now start to take control of those side lanes. You can see Ziv starting to place that vision they're going to need to do so. They have the Baron. Now they can go ahead and go for that 1-3-1 yep. one, one if they wanted to. But I feel like now they just have Ziv grouping up. Big. Pushing alongside. There you go. I feel like you just got a tower knife. Like, who needs this slow setup? We got so many ways to fight it. Uzi's flash is still not there. Yes, that's a QSS for him. But there's a lot of things that can land in his face where he can't get out. Let's take those last outer turrets and then look for a potential engage. Yo, moves Ooh. out. 957 is not going to be able to get any retaliation there. I didn't say initiate. LMS has been really good about dodging these ash arrows. If they see it, they're definitely dodging it and kind of parting the seed and letting it fly by. I think zero of them actually have come from Fog of War. They don't need to, but everything's kind of right in front of them. LPL's being very reactive this game instead of just doing it on their own. Yeah, every time they try to force, it is something that doesn't really stick. True. Or it gets turned around. It's so hard to force when they have like a, a Shen ult, when they have a ways to disengage with the Azir, and then they can just push down as the LMS side and use this Baron, use the engage, and can potentially dive. One thing that's helping him, she is doing a very good job of at least putting a little damage on Baby on the back line. It doesn't allow LMS to stay for too long, but it is long enough so far, and they're putting a good amount of damage on the base. Yeah, they got what they wanted the first in the right. turret, so now there's an open inhib they can go for. LPL constantly trying to poke them, but they have to be so afraid of the potential engage. Who's in? They're going to go on to Mako first. They feel they can take him out. Glacial Fisher goes back as he stays alive. Kars is on the top, and we see Sword on the bottom. Ziv's going to enter the fray. Fofo and Baby are on the back line trying to deliver the damage in as they drop the tank. She is one. MLX, she is down. Fancy dance and shoes for Baby on the back side as they are able to keep themselves alive on the side of LMS. So they got one for zero, but almost everything went wrong for the LMS. They engaged onto the support, couldn't kill him, the taunt Ooh, missed. Focus. Everything just got a miss left and right, but it doesn't matter because they're so far ahead and they could still take the one kill, get the inhib, and sure, you lose the flash on your AD carry. But it's fine. He's not really been under any pressure in these big fights, other than this one. Yeah. It's kind of like one, two, three. Wait, which one do we go for? Yeah, right here, Shea got the poke onto BB, and then they engaged onto Uzi. Uzi gets chunked to half pretty much instantaneously and has to flash away. And now, BB 
That's one, two, woo, three, four. Does it count when you flash? Mm, still, I would still call it a dodge. Still not hitting him. Kind of cheating. That's she is miss. There you go. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he missed it. <laughs> Always so, an old classic. That's right. He should have just trusted the Cloud Drake, dude. They have three. He would have made it. Anyway, Elder Drake is next, so we won't get any more of the Mountains or Infernals. And we see LMS looking to put what could be the final touches on this game, 13 to two. So not only have they really starved a lot of map pressure and turret gold and objective gold, but they have just starved the kill gold as well. And LMS is staying very strong throughout this game and keeping not uh, not keeping a one track mind. I mean, they've been playing very well. And I, I also really think, as we talked about in champs, like their yeah. comp is just perfect at playing against this poke from LPL, especially when you start getting ahead early on. Right. When you have these long range, Engage tools, you can skip past the front line of the enemy team because it's a Leona ulti flying down from the sky. It's a Javan who can combo from long range, and you can't really block that if you're MLXG or Mako. So you're just going to see your back line get hit eventually by something, and then the fight is on. Yeah, and then you're pretty much decimated with the lead that LMS currently has. And even their split push win condition of the Jace that they drafted in the first rotation or first round for themselves got shut down early by multiple ganks from Karsa. Pretty much was camping it. Cars is still with 100% KP. I mean, is it Jarvan? Sometimes you just throw down the flag. And, you know. <laughs> Don't give away the secret. Yeah, but 100% KP, not incorrect. That's how supports get other the KP. Shields. Oh, I'm here. You got Thresh Lantern. Let me get assistance. A little assistance. I mean, that, again, Sona is the easiest support to oh, get a yeah. lot of assist on and get a high KP. You don't even need to hit the ulti because you rarely do. Or you just wish before everything happens. We're going to be on the top turret. A little extra damage to come through. Well, bam. And it looks like they'll be able to finish this one off. 957 doing what he can. Pretty close to being in that hammer mode, though. The rest of the team and 957 kind of covering that top side, staying safe so they can get back to the fountain. And LMS says, that's fine. We're getting what we want and then backing up. Oh. We don't want to fight you in the base. We'd rather fight you just outside. And MLXG just takes so much damage. Doesn't have much MR here. Is mostly itemized towards armor and then has the Merc Treads. So he starts running in, gets hit by the Azir. He's just completely chunked out. And MLXG. Feels bad. <laughs> so that's kind of what you do in these games as Ramus. You're behind, you can't really engage, but you get to go fast. I mean, yeah, sadly for him, he didn't get the early impact we wanted. Uh, I think he skipped like a level four or five gank in there, and that's why he's getting punished now. Uh, he got the level two and three. To exactly, and that's what? fine. That was the first few steps, but he missed the next ones. And four, the five, the six. Now he's uh, he's dealing with this combo where there's an Azir wall, there's a Varus ulti, and his team can't really follow him. It's, it kind of sucks sometimes to play Ramus in the late game. Would you know? I would say if you have actually. You play Ramus in the late game? Uh, I mean, I personally like it because you're strong yourself. Mm. Your team is not benefiting too much because, uh, <laughs> yeah, you're not really helping them. You're well, just that's, kinda, uh, that's the kind of player you are, Deficio. Oh. Nine, five, seven, not long for this world. Great Zenith Blade coming out of Sword Art, and they're able to close that one down. He used just about everything actually to get in range for that here. So LMS looks committed to make this. Some of the final touches, they put the nail in the coffin of game one. Yeah, it's like final nail in the coffin five minutes ago, six minutes ago, and seven again. minutes ago. It's like they're still playing they're this trying. so slow. They have a 13,000 gold advantage. It's like maybe we should wait for the next Baron. You know, maybe get some more people picked off. That is true. Are they waiting for it? And they are going to be pinging on it. They say we either get the fight at Baron or we get the fight as they file over to it. And this is just a good example of how serious the LMS team are playing right now. Like. This is all stars, but yet they are not taking any chances with this lead. They want to win this game so yep. badly that they just make sure it's one in here. Then another after reset. Now a Baron. Do not throw this game. LMS have not dropped a single game so far. Five and zero in terms of the overall all stars games. And like you said, they're taking this very seriously. It's kind of been a top-heavy region for a while. And when you take the cream of the crop, you're just seeing how yeah. good these players are you know, on a team together. Yeah, and these players were good enough to even beat a European super team, which is very rare. <laughs> and, and that really shows how strong the LMS lineup is. Absolutely. That was a really great point yeah. to bring up. Yeah, I think that was important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, by the transitive property, the LPL you know, versus, uh, versus the North American team, it looks like you know Europe maybe has the harder group, I guess. Really good emerging, really good emerging regions. <laughs> so far, it looks that way. 
LMS spreading out a little bit here, hoping to get LPL to do the same thing and spread that team out thin so they can get a few hits on what they want. CA actually getting a nice bow over to himself so he can take a bit more damage here from Mako. And they will put themselves now behind the inhibitor <laughs> turret they can get safe from. Mid and hit goes down, and now it's just a matter of time. And we can see how Emlex here constantly, like, trying to find the flank. He probably needs to just flash torn something, but at the moment there's QSS on Varus, there's Plants on Azir, so he can't really get the carries. And there's no other engage for him to use, because the Ash Arrow has not been on point, and they've been able to dodge them, or again, we cleanse against it. Ooh. There is no follow-up for MLXG. There's no Alistar to start a fight where he can yeah. join in after. <laughs> this is the uh, Sonic the Hedgehog cosplay. You never actually get to do much. You just roll around, try to hit something. Oh, it's on oh. this guy. Oh. Oh. They're going to bop him for his coins. MLXG gets himself to safety. He is going to stay alive. 40-30 on the clock, and it does not look like Ziv is going to be leaving the playpen on the top side of the base for a while. At least until he takes that Nexus turret down. Yeah. <laughs> look at me. I go that's fast. It, that's, it. That's, the, that's the Ravis dream. He did. But you know what? That was aggressive. Oh. That almost goes down locked to the Iron Solari and a whole hell of a lot more to keep the tankiest member alive. Makes you wince a little bit as LMS starting to really tear the base to shreds here. They're looking at the Nexus turrets. One's already under half. Got oh, one, got one. He got a support. Got Sordar. He seems to be the guy that has the global taunt initiation for him right now. Karsis a little too far forward. Gets himself to safety. Fofo's on the tank, and he gets himself back into a spot where he can deliver the damage. Oh, and oh, goes there. Fofo. Pushes them back, but the Emperor is divided. And they divide them away from the fountain. There is no safety. There's no solace for the LPL right now. And the LMS will take game one in strong fashion. The LPL got their two kills at about five-ish minutes, six minutes. And then they didn't really pick up anything else afterwards. They got one kill then, then they got one at 15 minutes. That is about a 20 plus minute span where they didn't drop anything, almost 30 minutes. Your lucky kills don't wear off, Cyrene. Oh. <laughs> Still, every single time LPL tried to group in that mid game to be like, ah, we will siege without Zerith. We are strong. Instant engagements has happened. Leona, Javan, the Shen ulti as well. And I, it just felt like there was so little they could actually do once they fell behind on the LPL side. And this LMS draft was very, very good, very smart against the poke comp, and I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> An overall amazing game coming out there. We saw the Ramus as uh, it was interesting. We didn't see Jadarvin get picked up by MLXG. It was there. It was open. Yeah. And they could have actually done that for themselves. But then they get strangled out of the tanks, and then they kind of have nowhere to go. Yeah, Stake with the big fro, with the big brain underneath that thing. With how much of crap. it is fro? <laughs> like, who knows? <laughs> All right, for more on how game one played out, let's go ahead and send it to the analyst desk. Thank you very much, Riv. The LMS striking the first blow in our best of five. Let's start where they left off. Champion select the Ramus pick of all things coming through for MLXG. The jungle matchup was one of those key matchups we were looking at to determine this series. Game one, Carsa comes out on top. Yeah, I'm not going to mince words here. In my opinion, that was the most garbage draft I've ever oh. seen from the LPL. Oh, ever? ever? Ever. Now, and I'm going to go Lock through why. Uh, poke compositions. The LPL has never been strong at playing co uh, poke compositions. We're the engaging region. We want to have as much engage as possible. And you basically had Ash and you had Ramus into Azir. And the Ramus was picked after the Azir. Caster's already talked about it. Ramus tries to go in. Guess what? He's just going to get shuffled back to the side. He's never going to find that hard engage. The other thing is Shin. We've seen Shin time and time again counter out the LPL strategy. Sure. At Worlds, Reaper on Cloud9 was like, hey guys, these guys like to fight, let's take Shin. And that's exactly what happened. The LPL on the bottom side of the map took skirmish after skirmish directly into the Shin, directly into a numbers disadvantage, and threw away like 5k gold leads. And a CA of all people as well on that Lucian in the mid lane, getting, getting uh, picked up by the Shen back at Worlds, that is. Let's talk about, you know, the victory though crafted by the LMS. While there may have been some missteps in Champion Select for the LPL, LMS come out with a composition they're very comfortable piloting, only giving up two deaths throughout the entirety of the game. I mean, at the end of the day, this was very well drafted by the LMS, and like you say, there were some missteps, but I'm not willing to say lost at draft because the LPL still had win conditions. They were playing very well around the Jace that was split pushing super well. They got two turrets in the top side at the cost of some kills. There was still a window, but they never really played around how strong the Jace was, his potential to split push after the early game. It just became team fight after team fight, and you're not winning team fights with this draft. So it was really 
both the draft being difficult to execute and then the execution being off base. I'd also say, I mean, you can look at the Zareth as another way to win. Like, Zareth to me is supposed to be such a strong matchup into the Azir. You're able to outrange him, you're able to poke him down, you're supposed to be kind of having this lane advantage. And I forgot and, they had a Zareth half and the time. Yeah, I mean, it, it didn't materialize at all. Like, he was losing from the word go. He was heavily down in farm. Uh, I didn't see him have an effective ultimate the entire game. Like, it really felt like Shia was pretty invisible, but. Um, I do have to give a ton of credit over to Karsa because, you know, we talked at the start, if LMS is going to win, it's likely through a strong performance from him. One zero eighteen, I believe, 100% kill participation on the game. Like, that is incredible. He, he had such a strong game, was everywhere he needed to be. And although Ramus may seem like more of a, a jokey pick if you are only following competitive because it wasn't around in Worlds, it's been a very, very strong solo queue pick in preseason with Aftershock, so it's not like this really was a freebie. And Ross? again, uh, my thing is is that I feel like the LMS, like I had some questions about their draft because I thought their priority pick was really mm -hmm. weird in their semifinal against SEA, but now it just makes so much sense. They just have a great read on exactly what is going to counter out the enemy team, exactly what the enemy team wants, and they understand what they do best, whereas the LPL didn't understand what they do best. They ran a poke competition. Shia looked super uncomfortable in the Zareth. That is a matchup that he should not lose by, you know, 100-plus CS. And they just got kicked around the map. I mean, Carso leading the charge. The rest of the members stepping up behind him. I want to take a look at one replay. Comes 9.30 into the game. Four for zero in favor of LMS. The team fighting here for them will come out on top. This replay brought to you by Acer Predator. Yeah, and this is this is talking about the Shen, right? Shen was getting bullied in the top side, was down farm, was losing. And this gave Ziv a way to get out of lane, to get to the bot side, picks up kills, a big advantage gotten for them, and he's able to then hold on in his 1v1 because of that. And look, Shen will always get a chance to get out of lane, but you have to be on point with it. If you do this and Jace takes multiple turrets and you don't pick up the four kills they ended up with, then it's not worth it. But in this case, perfect execution. So the execution and the idea both in harmony there. And it meant that they started the gold lead. They just kept rolling the entire game. Yeah, Ziv moved to 3-0 and no at the conclusion of that team fight. So very early on, three kills on a Shen. Puts him in a nice position against that split pushing Jace, but I want to talk about the members of the LMS team that stepped up behind Carsa. Fofo and yep. Sword Art in particular, mm -hmm. these two impressed me superbly in this game one. I mean, the play that stands out to me was when Sword Art and Carsa just looked at each other and they say, You see that uh, Zareth on the mid lane? Like, yep. And immediately Leona and Jarvan come around the Over tower, the wall. Yep. just yep. insta dive and just nail him. It's beautiful. Exactly. Having the confidence there as well as the synergy between those two players to execute on those plays. Fofo, you mentioned the Zareth being honestly a fine pick yeah. into the Azir, in a lot of cases yeah. advantageous, right? And here he is in a CS deficit, Fofo averaging well over 10 CS a minute, deathless in the game, great performance out of him. The beginning of the week, we were like, can he play anything but Zoe? Apparently he can. And I mean, he massively out damages Zareth, which is one of the best poke champs from the mid lane in the entire game, right? This is one of those champions you expect to be racking up an incredibly high DPM, and uh, he outplayed him at all stages. Now, Frost, you had the most criticism for LPL's draft here, calling it the worst you've <laughs> ever seen. So, they've elected blue side here for game two. How do they fix it? Uh, I would put a higher priority on Shin, but if I'm the LMS, I would recognize that and also deny it. We've seen time and time again that Shin is always kind of a, a power pick, especially for 957, that a lot of teams will play around either denying it by banning it or taking it away, and I think it is probably the most important pick for them because of how they like to play their style, and I hope they recognize that. All right, well, there you have it. The LMS have taken game one. We'll see if the LPL, LPL rather, can fight back as the series continues. Game two is coming up after the break. Well, Taunt is in. Should be enough damage to take down 957. First blood's gonna be going over to save with the last hit. The one blood oh. from Bebe, then the bot lane and Uzi. The solar flare comes right in from Sword Art. They take that fight. The top side loses CA and MLXG, and the LMS close in immediately. Interesting that LPL were allowed to walk in. Oh, there it is. Intensity, intensities. Oh, and goes Fofo pushes them back, but the Emperor is divide, and they divide them away from the fountain. There is no safety, there's no solace for the LPL right now, and the LMS will take game one.